Welcome back. Well, let's get in that global perspective then. We have Hans Goethe, Head of Investment Asia at Bank International, who joins in. Hans, hi. Thanks very much for joining in. Well, we were talking in the break about, uh, you know, the China-India debate, and it seems as though China just can't get enough of gains. It's at a seven-year high. There's a trade surplus, which has come in better than expectations in terms of data today. What's driving the Chinese markets, and how would you pitch the India versus China story now? Well, two, that two different ball games, basically. I mean, starting with India first, we've had a tremendous run in expectations of all the good things to happen. And I think India has this uh, needed uh, consolidation, if you will. Uh, earnings growth in India has slowed down quite a bit, and we think we are close to a bottom there when you look at earnings uh, in relation to GDP. So we're bottoming out there. But uh, the momentum right now is clearly in Chinese equities. And that is mainly based on uh, stimulus measures. We're looking at uh, very high real interest rates. Uh, rem remember, in China, you have the PPI uh, in deflation for 37 months in a row. And there's still a lot of room for interest rates to come down. So the China story is based basically on fiscal and monetary stimulus and, of course, the outlook for foreign investors to come in and uh, possibly the inclusion of A-share index, uh, uh, A-shares in uh, some of the global indexes. Okay, so uh, you expect that therefore some money intended for India could also go there? Is that how hedge funds and emerging market funds would look at the equation? Well, so far we have seen very little outflow out of Indian equities. I think uh, foreign investors look at India as a five to ten year story. It's probably the most attractive story on that time horizon. And therefore, we have seen very little outflows out of India. We don't expect that necessarily to change. But what's going to happen is that in the emerging markets universe, that we're going to see a re-rating of China A shares. And that, again, will depend on what's happening with A share weightings in the indexes. Vanguard, for instance, has increased their share to China. FTSE has done it. MSCI decision comes tomorrow whether mm -hmm. to include A shares. So we'll see. I think the, it's in that direction. But if A shares are included, obviously somebody else's weightage falls, doesn't it? That is correct, yeah, of course. Uh, it will, but it will be uh, evenly distributed across the board. Uh, but I think we have to see that happening first. And even if A shares are being included, it starts very small. I mean, we're talking maybe 1% uh, inclusion first, okay. because the Chinese market cannot possibly absorb all, all the money that is uh, bound to come in. So mm -hmm. this is something that will take place over a number of years. How important, Hans, is what's happening in Greece? Do you think that it would just be an isolated reaction if in case there is something more grave in terms of the negotiations that come through, and hence limited to Europe? And your expectations on the G7 summit meet also today. Anything in terms of geopolitical rattles that we can expect because of, you know, uh, the sanctions being in place for Russia? Well, I think what uh, concerns the financial markets, whatever's coming out of the G7 probably will have to do with Greece, uh, how tough they will be. I think there is a general political will to keep the EU together and uh, we still expect some kind of one minute before midnight deal. Uh, it, it will be going down to the wire with tough talk on both sides. So, But I think what the markets are expecting is some kind of deal uh, that kicks the can further down the road mm -hmm. and alleviates the, uh, the, the tension. Uh, if, if Greece were to exit, I mean in the worst case, of course, that would have a severe impact on, on a lot of other markets as well. How are you reading the extraordinarily strong jobs data uh, and the consequent rise in bond yields? As an emerging market investor, what should we expect? Outflows from EMs? Well, that is always the risk. I mean, we, had, uh, we have an economy in the United States which is obviously uh, firing on all cylinders. The uh, unemployment report was, uh, the non farm payroll report is very strong. And we have seen and are seeing a recovery in the housing market. So we look, we're talking about an economy that uh, should reaccelerate in the second half. Now, whether that brings forward a rate hike by the Fed remains to be seen because the Fed cannot operate in a vacuum. They will have to take the international situation into consideration. Whether they will do that is anybody's guess, but uh, clearly it will attract money from outside. And we have seen that in the rise of the US dollar already. I mean, the US dollar. Uh, increase of 20-25% in itself is a monetary tightening 
and uh, has an impact on emerging markets. Yes, the capital flows may move to, to the United States. So I didn't get, uh, quite get uh, when you expect the Fed to possibly move, uh, uh, Hans. Uh, earlier, I think you were expecting September. Well, our base case is September, but uh, the conviction is not very high. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the U.S. data in isolation, you would, you would say, yeah, September makes a lot of sense. But if you take into account the uh, increase, the sharp increase in the dollar, which in itself is a policy tightening, has the same effect, and the situation outside the United States, in the Eurozone, for instance, we don't know what Greece will, what happens with Greece. Uh, obviously, by September, we will know, but this will be taken into consideration. We have a Chinese economy which is slowing down pretty dramatically. Uh, emerging markets are, are slowing down. So I think the Fed will probably have to take a look at the global picture as well before taking a decision. Okay. Are you at the moment a buyer or advising buy on India or would you wait for, uh, uh, you know, probably cheaper prices? Um, you know, I think, I'm not sure whether India gets that much cheaper. I mean, valuations are slightly below the 10-year average. Um, as I mentioned before, corporate earnings have been slowing down uh, in terms of uh, percentage of GDP. They're at 2004 level, so you could easily see corporate profits picking up. But from a momentum perspective, India is probably not the place to be right now. So I think the momentum is elsewhere, uh, particularly China. Okay, and Hans, one last quick question then. What did you make of the OPEC meet and uh, the fact that Brent crude prices are down around six tenths of a percent at this point, hovering at 62? What's your sense um, on Brent if you had to forecast it for the end of the year? I would think we're going to be stuck in this trading range. Uh, I'm not sure whether we're going to retest the lows that we've seen in March. Uh, probably we may have seen the high for the year already. So it's going to be a trading range probably between somewhere between 50 and uh, 65 uh, without, again, the Saudis, they want to keep the mm. oil price low. And the decision not to increase the, uh, the oil production was not a surprise to us. Of course, uh, yes, it wasn't a surprise. Let's take a break on that note. Hans Goethe, thank you very much for joining us uh, with your perspective. My pleasure.